Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk you through the Maven C4 18 by 56 binos. That's 18 by 56. Really, really impressive. Thank you to Maven for sending these out to the channel and taking the risk, sending them in Minnesota in the middle of winter in February. It's a risk, man, but they've held up well. I'm going to start off with the specs. I'm going to go over that quickly and I'm going to get right into talking about the internal design after that and explain how those internals uh, affect the image that your eye is going to receive. And then after that, we'll talk about aesthetics and product feel, things of that nature. So specs, here we go. This is the C series. And so it's their mid range model, not a low end model, a mid range model. The size is pretty impressive. It's 7.75 inches. It's less than eight inches overall. Really cool. That uh, is related to the type of prisms that they have in there and just compact design. The weight is 45.1 ounces. They are uh, advertised as durable and well balanced. It has a lightweight polymer frame. That's an important thing to remember. It's a polymer frame. So big binoculars, big 56 millimeter uh, lenses in there, but it does have a polymer frame. Saves on weight. So somehow they can achieve 45.1 ounces. The glass is extra low dispersion ED glass. Important point there. Again, we're talking about 18X, so you need to see uh, extra low dispersion glass for sure. Fully multi-coated lenses, another important thing we'll talk about in a little bit. Phase correction coating. Exceptionally clear, bright, high contrast image, they say on their website. Excellent color fidelity, they also advertise. Uh, waterproof and fog proof, but I'm just going to speak to the waterproofness real quick. It's a uh, IP6, so about five minutes at one meter is the waterproofness, and uh, then it, it does advertise as fog proof. I believe that I believe these are nitrogen uh, purged, and then these are of course tripod adaptable. Um, I already spoke to the waterproofness rating. Um, let me speak to the sub zero rating. It says that they're you know usable between negative 10 Fahrenheit and then 140 Fahrenheit. Now I haven't tested any extreme heat at all. I have tested some extreme cold and even in 15, 20 below, of course they still work. I think the negative 10 is just a general rating out there because it has dials and things on there that you might turn or like a diopter. You don't really want to push that when it's really, really cold, but it still functioned, still worked in the extreme cold. Direct to consumer. It's another spec I want to talk about. They don't have any retail markup and they do have a lifetime warranty. That's an important thing. And here's the last thing I'm going to touch on. The prisms here, this will get us into the next portion. The prisms are Schmidt Peschen prisms. Now I'm trying to pronounce that the way that I think it's supposed to be said, uh, Schmidt Peschen prisms. That's what I'm going to be saying. If I say it wrong, forgive me. Uh, it's just my best, but I want to talk about what's actually happening inside the optic now. All right, so I'm not a scientist and I'm not an expert in these things per se. I don't work on it for a living, but I, I'm learning. I'm a student right now, so I'm going to try to explain some basics here inside this optic with the schmidt Bashan prism what's happening is you have a pentaprism on top like a five-sided prism you have a pentaprism on top and then underneath that you have an air gap actually and then you have a half pentaprism which I, I think the term for it is a born find prism if i said that right and that's an important feature right there understanding that there's an air gap and just something simple that you should understand is it these two um reflections in like into the lower prism i think it it happens in a way where there's something called critical angle it doesn't quite achieve uh critical angle and so they have to use reflective coatings on the surfaces in order to make it like usable uh, which is is common but you don't see that so much in the next tier up i know that they have a, a b series and i think the b series uses abby koenig prisms if if i'm correct about that. I'm going to have to look into that and be 100% sure, but I think you'll pay a little more for those Abbey Koenig prisms, and these might be slightly cheaper. And uh, so you, you have a couple things with this, and I'm just going to talk about what some people would say is, is a downside, but really it's, it's not. For you as a consumer, this isn't going to be a downside. It's just one thing to be aware of. Because there's like glass to air transitions, um, the optic has to be coated so you don't have so much loss. It, it helps retain and, and transfer some trueness there. Uh, you know, there's reflection loss in this design and reflections are really important with lenses. So, you know, the image might not be quite as impressive, um, but you can improve it by doing dielectric coating. And that's what they do with this optic. So that's a really good thing. And then phase correction is another thing. You have to have some phase correction 
with uh, optics like this. And so the coatings and the phase correction, that's going to help you substantially to improve resolution and contrast. Those are two really big things, especially for me, if I'm birding or I'm looking at targets. And I do a lot of long range shooting. In fact, that's the primary use of this optic for me is long range and spotting, particularly, uh, you know, past a thousand yards or so. So 18X isn't too much for me. It's not a problem. And in fact, here's a little bit of spotting I did. I hooked my phone up to it. I zoomed in on my phone a little bit. Sorry about the slight degradation of the image, but I'm actually using it to record and uh, record my hits and use it for a little bit of filming on my channel. And here's the experience I had shooting at 1,030 yards with a 6.5 Creedmoor recording through these binoculars. As you could see there, the image is very good and I do not have complaints about it. In fact, this uh, type of prism is one of the most popular on the market right now. I did a little market research. It is definitely one of the most popular. Uh, this one is very common and optics that are gonna be coming out of China and that shouldn't be a concern for you, especially in something that's as large as an 18X right now because they're getting the coatings right, they're doing the dielectric uh, treatment, phase correction, all that kind of stuff. And it's really actually making a very affordable optic perform incredibly well with really good trueness like they said they advertise on the website fidelity to color those kind of things it matters a lot to me and i don't want a junky pair of 18x binoculars because you can't use them for anything they won't be good for anything they would blur the image so much you'd have so much chromatic aberration and uh, it would just be difficult to see targets and see things move it'd be frustrating and so i'm actually really happy with these in the market they're very popular they're affordable and I think if I remember right, this design is actually lighter. So having a, an 18X that's less than eight inches overall and you know, 56 millimeter <laughs> lenses in it is pretty large, but it, it's really not that bad, right around 45 ounces. I think it was 45.1 if I remember right, ounces. That's not bad at all. And I, I'm happy with them. They're performing well. The image quality is great. Now I'm gonna move on to the other Parts, the features, fit and finish, aesthetics, and the feel of the optic. All right, so you probably saw there, it does come with uh, like a neoprene, a really nice neoprene neck strap that has two clips to remove it off of your neck quickly. Uh, lens caps and the lens caps that it comes with here are pretty functional, they're good. I actually do need them, especially for when I throw it in my backpack or I'm laying it around on rocks and stuff like that. I don't want snow getting in there, weather. Um, I forgot where I put the front lens caps. So it does come with them. I just don't know where I put them at the moment, unfortunately. And I'm just showing you that there is a polymer frame here on this, that this kind of wraps around and it grabs onto that. It's not too terribly hard to get it back on. I'm just uh, really inept or something. It also comes with a double layered microfiber uh, storage bag like a really really nice storage bag so if you wanted to protect it like i said when it's in a bag when you're on a hunt or something like that it's a really nice bag that it comes with and you know it's boxed well that's one thing they take seriously is presentation the way that they present their product the way that they give it to you that's something they consider pretty heavily and i noticed that when i open the box like this feels like a very high quality product i know it's completely uh, produced in china but they've done a wonderful job either way and it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I actually think it's got a lot of pride of ownership with a product like this. So now let's look a little bit at some of these features. Now that we've gotten the products it comes with out of the way, I uh, kind of want to look at, at the, uh, the barrels there and the eyepieces as well as the standoff here. So I'm just showing you there are multiple stages 
depending on how your face is built, that's why there's so many stages in here and why some people might need to dial it out pretty far and some people uh, right up to it. You don't need to dial it in at all. And I, I probably could stand off on the first stage right there and I would be okay with that or zero. I don't need too much standoff on these particular ones. It just does, it kind of depends on how your, your eyes are and then how your face is built and how close it can come. Um, I will say if you have a really narrow face, because of the barrel size here, that would be difficult for you. I mentioned that in a previous video, uh, but if you don't have a really narrow face, then it shouldn't be an issue. The diopter adjustment is really nice and smooth there. And the reason that you have a diopter adjustment on binoculars, if you aren't sure, some people are like, man, you don't have a reticle, what are you adjusting there? You're actually adjusting uh, kind of like the acuity, the sharpness for one eye, and then you go up and use your general focus on the top there, that big top knob. So it's more so that you're getting one super sharp, and then your eyes do some of the work, and the focus does some of the work, so that the two images coming together through your left and right eye uh, blend it. Your brain does an amazing thing. It blends it and it makes it work, but a sharper image in your right eye with that diopter, which is really cool. And it definitely works for me because my right eye is actually my bad eye. Even though it is my dominant shooting eye, it's not very good. And so this helped me get those binoculars super nice and clear. And when I hand it to other people, they can actually adjust it and make it clear for their eye, which we needed to do at a recent shooting competition that we had when we were all spotting for each other. For a moment here, I'll just comment on the strength of the joint or the connection that puts the two pieces together. It seems very strong, seems solid. You do want to be careful to not let that get over crunched. Uh, I do think it would hold up to a lot of stress, but you don't want to test that out and you don't want to find out because the barrels are not equal. They are not an equal cylinder from top to bottom. Obviously, there is a uh, change in diameter from the eyepiece up to the uh, exit there with the lenses and so you don't want to smash them together because you would put an uneven force on there and you could break them it is a polymer body on these but the joint itself seems strong and I don't have any concerns about it for any normal use whatsoever even maybe an occasional drop but don't do it don't try it if it happens on accident remember lifetime warranty so they got you covered now being that these are considered heavy magnification, you know, 18X. I prefer to use them on a tripod just for steadiness and aim of direction. I don't think it's needed. You could brace uh, on your arms, your, your arms on your knees. If you're in a hunting position, if you're glassing hills for hunting, uh, watching for golf, that's not something I do, but maybe that, that's one of the ways you would use these. Uh, or birding. I just think finding yourself an ultralight tripod is the best way to do it, just to keep it really steady. And then you can get a really nice clear image. You can be zoomed in really, really tight. And you have the steadiness of something else holding it for you. And just kind of walking up to a tripod is much more natural. Although the neck lanyard is a good quality neoprene lanyard, I don't mind uh, the weight. I did carry them around. I neck carried them quite a bit on the particular day that you're seeing right here just to get an idea of what 45 ounces feels like when it's slung around your neck and you're walking around a lot. And it wasn't problematic. It didn't bother me at all. I just prefer the steadiness of a tripod. And so it's good that it has a tripod adapter and I throw mine on a Sunway Photo tripod pretty much every time I go out, especially if I'm at a shooting competition. That's just what I prefer is throwing it on a tripod and spotting that way. Now I recognize that 18X may be a little too much for some people and you know on the Maven website they do a really good job of helping you find what level magnification is going to make sense for what you're doing, whether you're hunting, whether you're in a wooded area, big open areas, spotting for birds. Read the descriptions on the website of how they design them and what the thought process behind them. They have a lot more than 18X. In fact, they, they have 8X. They have smaller binos. Um, they have some you know, better quality glass binos or prisms as well. So there's lots of options. Check out the website if 18X just seems like it's a little too much for you because I bet they have something else that would be more so in your wheelhouse or more appropriate to your application. That being said, I've used these at closer ranges. It wasn't problematic for me. The 18X wasn't too much. You know, the, they're, they're lightweight with that Schmidt Pichon uh, prism style, the polymer body and they're compact and I fit them in my backpack pretty easy. Uh, they're not too bad at 45 ounces. I really didn't notice it around my neck or in my bag, wasn't, wasn't taking up too much space. So I can advocate for these and say, even though it's 18X, it didn't cause me too many issues. And unless you're in thick wooded areas, I think you probably get away with these in a lot of circumstances, pretty versatile. 
Well, that about does it for me, guys. I think this video is long enough. I've covered a lot of the ways I'm using it. I'll continue to give you updates over the months to come, and I'll just finish this video out with a little bit of a blooper. I was filming way too close to the river, and I had a near miss, almost lost a bunch of my gear, including my you know, very expensive DJI camera. That was a really close call. It's actually sitting right on the lip of a, about a millimeter of ice before falling through into the river which was underneath me and I played it a little too close uh, to the river this time. I'm so glad I was able to save it in the binoculars both. That was a close one, man. Hey, check out Maven Optics. Go to their website, Maven Built on Instagram. Highly suggest it. I think you'll enjoy what you find and uh, I really enjoy the orange flare. I have a lot of gear that has something like that. My wedding ring is orange actually by itself and it's cool because it helps me find it when I drop it in a snowbank or in a river.